want to, there we go. All right, so we really wanna make sure that our numbers are accurate when we're looking at our income versus expenses because when you think about your budget and having your budget being the, the guiding document to your, to your financial journey, if any of the numbers aren't true and aren't accurate, it's gonna throw everything off. So when we're thinking about income, we really want that to be uh, accurate and we wanna use our post-tax money. Um, so anything that comes in after taxes is what we wanna use our budget because that's money that we're going to have to spend. We don't wanna use our gross income because that's gonna then be taxed and our budget will, will be off because um, some of that money will be deferred to taxes and it's gonna, it's gonna throw the numbers off. So really make sure that that's accurate and you have the amount of money coming in that you expect. And that's why just as a, as a side note, when, you're, when you are building your budget and you're going into your income section, we wanna stay away from putting gifts or things that you found, or, or maybe you play the lottery and you wanna scratch off ticket that's, that's $200. Um, that's not something that we can normally rely on. So we really wanna keep that out of the budget. And things like tax refunds are on here and they're important to note, but if, if you're unsure of, of what your normal tax refund is gonna be, or um, you can't really project that out, let's leave that off as well, because we really want this to be accurate and, and we would rather under undershoot our income in that case and then have um, a tax refund come in and have that be something that we can divert elsewhere or, or just have as extra. So. With income, we really just want to use that income that we get on a reliable basis. And then with expenses, it's really important to understand um, all the types of expenses and, and the different ones that you're going to run into. So with the fixed expenses, those are going to be things like rent or your mortgage, where it is fixed number. It's going to stay the same every month, month over month. So car payments, things like that, they're necessary, but they're always going to stay the same. We can really rely on those. And then flexible is going to be also those necessities, but they're gonna change from month to month. So we're gonna to need to do our best at projecting out of what it's gonna be and, and potentially using some averages. So these are things like groceries and, and gas if you're driving. Um, these are going to be the expenses that you still need. You're still going to do them on a monthly basis, but they're gonna change from, from month to month. So electricity, um, depending on how much you use, it's gonna it's gonna vary from month to month. So I still need to pay that, but I'm not 100% sure what it's going to come in at. And you can understand trends of, of, of how much they're probably going to be, but we just want to be aware that they are flexible. flexible. And then we have our discretionary expenses, which is entertainment-based. These are 100% up to you. These are purchases that you're making on your own um, to, on a monthly basis. So these could 100% be cut out, but then you're not going to have that kind of life balance that we want to see with the with the enjoyment factor. So discretionary is is completely up to you. So that's if if you go and, and buy a coffee every morning or if you go to a movie or something like that. And then of course we have loans. So loan payments are, are generally going to be uh, up in that fixed expense area. That's just money that we we owe back. So first one we want to start, we really want to analyze our income and the next few slides are going to be these chart based um, slides where you can see just a quick example of what your, your, the pieces of your budget might look like. So analyzing your income is, is really important. We, we have our income from our jobs, um, support, things like child support. If you receive child support, that's going to go on your income. Um, anything other, if you have a, if you have a second job, anything like that, loan advances can also be an income. If, if you're taking a loan advance out, that's going to be money that you have in your hand. Um, and then you're going to add those up and it's going to be your total income. So income is normally the, the simpler part of your budget because it is very predictable, um, especially anything that's going on to your budget is going to be the predictable income. So it's really just grabbing your, your pay stubs or any other types of income you have and, and putting them into a chart and adding that up to find your total income. Next, we want to analyze our spending, which gets a little bit more involved. Um, one thing that I always suggest to do is keep receipts for every, every transaction that you do. So one of my favorite things to, to suggest is pick a month and just live how you normally live. The only change that I would ask to make is anytime you're spending money, get a receipt and save the receipt in a, in a folder. And then at the end of the month, you can take your receipts, add everything up 
and you can get your true kind of analysis of, of what your spending looks like from month to month. So um, it's just a, a great eye opener because sometimes you think, whoa, I, I went out and I bought coffee way more than, than I thought I did. Um, again, it's probably not going to destroy or break your budget, but it might be an extra 10 or $20 that, that you can, that you can divert elsewhere. Looks like we have a chat here. Perfect. Yeah. So the library system has a few free tools from consumer financial protection bureau on budgeting. Um, I know that they do have a lot of great budget sheets, so that's wonderful. So, um, the Bradford library does have those resources and, and that's a, that's a great place to start. Um, and with your, with your spending, it is really important that we get these numbers correct. Um, and that's why those budget sheets really are super helpful because you can plug them in, um, and, and work everything out. Um, but it really does just give you an idea of, of what your habits look like. And these are things like rent, utilities, grocery, if you have a gym membership, um, savings, again, we're going to divert the, the savings into spending, even though technically that's money that's still in your account you're diverting it towards future use. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that in spending. We're gonna put that as a spent towards your future. And then loan payments, of course, there's gonna be a bunch of other ones on, on your budget as well. Um, but keep in mind of what's gonna be that fixed and what's flexible and what's discretionary. So on the sheet, if, if you think, you know, I'm, my budget comes up in negative $45 every month, but I'm spending $50 on a gym membership, Maybe that's something that, that we want to take a break from that gym for a little bit so we can get our budget back on track. Um, but really keep in mind that the budget will work as well as how honest you are with yourself. Um, so if you fudge the numbers to, to make your budget work, let's say we leave out um, how much gas you get, or let's say you got um, gas three times in a month and you only account for one and your budget comes out great. But at the end of the month, you're still down some money and we can't really understand why. Well, it's because you left out two times getting gas and, and now that's money that's not there, that's not in your account. So it, if your budget isn't honest, it's not going to work out for you because maybe you've, you do spend more than you wrote down. Um, and again, it's just off of how much money you have, money coming in versus money coming out. So along with having those difficult conversations with yourself before you start your budget, you wanna come, come to your budget and be really brutally honest with, with what your habits are, which is why I always suggest taking a, taking a span of time and collecting all the receipts that you get because that's really, really important to know exactly what your, what your spending looks like. Oops. And then once we've done that, we have our bottom line. So we wanna take that total income that we, that we calculated and subtract it from the total expenses. And that's really going to get our balance uh, for the month and, and what money we have to defer elsewhere. Or if it's in the negative, we want to take a look at those expenses um, and see where we can potentially make some cuts or um, find some savings. Maybe if you have a cell phone plan that's, that's a little bit expensive, maybe take a look, shop around, see if there are any that are more affordable. Um, also, if you do have the time um, or the energy to, you can always go out and think, do, do I need to go pick up a part-time job here and there? Um, so there are things that you can do to, to balance out that budget, uh, but the best first step is, is having that budget. I would rather somebody come to me with, with a budget that isn't balanced and is in the negative than to have somebody come to me with, with no budget at all. Um, because if, if you have a budget and even if it's in the negative, there's still a lot of, a lot of room that we can work with and it's a great first step to have those numbers down. So really when we're looking at staying on track, we just always wanna be aware of spending, which a budget really helps us with, um, prepare for those up upcoming expenses, which is why we always wanna work in those savings and contingency funds in there, um, staying organized. We can use apps, we can use different resources, um, just like the, the library has the budget sheet resources um, and monitor your progress. So you should see month after month um, it's just like anything else in life. As you budget more and more, you're going to get more comfortable doing it and you're going to see it really improve and, and you're going to see, you're going to find a process that works really well for you. And it's just going to get easier and, and you're going to find yourself with a budget that's really working by itself month over month. 
and it's making sure that, that your finances are staying in a, in a really smart spot. Um, and then of course, with everything in, in the financial world, we wanna expect those setbacks. Life happens, things happen. Um, I got a flat tire not too long ago um, that I needed to get two new tires. So that was something that was absolutely unexpected for me. So it, it did a little something in my budget. So we always wanna expect those setbacks and really it's just about how we recover and how we move forward from that. That's really important. And having a strong budget is gonna help you um, get over those road bumps a, a lot more smoothly. So then we're looking at our, our budget and we can really have multiple budgets for different things. And this is where we come into our putting our budget in action. So we have three really types of budgets. They're short-term, medium-term, and long-term. And these are aside from our overarching budget. And this is where these goal settings, these setting our goals comes from. So um, let's say with a short-term goal, that's going to be a year or less. And so in this scenario, we're gonna say that our goal is to have a down payment for a car. Um, specifically, we wanna be able to save up $1,000 in, in a year. Um, so really this is just that planning process of those budgeting. So what is it gonna take for me to have $1,000 by the end of the year? So we're, we're gonna try and figure out what I need to set aside per week. So that's just gonna be take the amount of money that I wanna save, which is $1,000, divide it by how many weeks are in my timeline, so 52 weeks in the year. And that's me saying that I need to save $19.23 a week for me to hit my goal of having that $1,000 down payment. So if I can put away $20 a week, I'm gonna be above my goal and it's, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna have succeeded with that budget. Um, and just keep this in mind, keep in all the, all the scenarios in mind as we move forward, uh, because we're gonna talk a little bit more about them at the end. Um, of this. So that's a short term. It's going to be a year or less. Really, when you look at it, it's just about dividing up what I need to do on an incremental level to get where I want to go. And that's really a, a big part of budgeting is making it incremental. So work your way up and towards it. So for our midterm goal, let's say I have $1,800 in, in credit card debt, and I want to pay that off in three years. So that's about the time of a midterm goal. It's not too long, but it's, it's not short. Um, so I want to pay that off in three years. Um, so I really want to budget for $2,000. So if I'm looking at $2,000, that's for one year. It should be it should be less. So in three years, but it's the same type of deal. Um, and this is great because this will prompt me to fix this slide. So um, we really want to uh, make sure that that goal is, is set. So we're looking at, we're just going to break that down. How much do I need to set aside per month in order to uh, meet that goal. So in three years, let's do the math right now live since I don't have it on the slide. So $2,000 um, and that'll be in three years, 36 months in a year. Divide by 36. So that's going to be, I'm going to need to save about um, 50 to $60 a month um, in order to reach that goal. So that would be the midterm goal. Again, it's really just that simple math of figuring out how much you need, what's your timeline, and just doing the division. And then long-term, let's say it's get married or, or to buy a house. Um, again, it's, a, it's the same type of thing. The big thing that we want to remember in this is we want to know that in budgeting and in life, it's, it's very rare that there's just one thing happening at a time. So we really want to know that we can have a short-term goal, a, a mid-term goal, and a long-term goal all going at the same time. So what is our budget gonna look like in that? So that's something that we're gonna add into our expenses when we're looking at those goals. So we're gonna add in on our budget sheet. Let's go back here. Um, under our loan, we would put um, car payment and that could, go, that could go from savings as well. So we would put that into our, um, into our overall budget. So I know that I need to get to a thousand dollars for this, um, for this down payment on a car, and it's gonna require this monthly payment. So I'm gonna put that monthly payment in my budget. And then same thing, I'm gonna budget in for that credit card payment, that the debt that I wanna pay off. And then I'm gonna also do the same thing for the either the wedding that I wanna have or the house that I wanna have. So the budgets can really work all together, but we need to make sure that it's all coming back to our master budget. So it's smart to have different budgets for different projects, 
but really make sure that your numbers are staying consistent across the board on all of your budgets because it's great to focus on one thing, but life isn't as easy as just doing one thing at a time always. We wanna be able to um, be organized and have everything in check as well. So when we're looking at budgets, oftentimes budgets do fail. And that's not necessarily due to anything that the budget does, it's more so the, the planning issues. So um, we really wanna investigate some of the reasons why these budgets fail. Um, the number one I would say is, is disorganization. So those, those numbers of not being accurate or not being honest when you're looking at expenses. Um, a budget's not going to do any good if the if the numbers aren't real. Um, so we want to look at our organization and making sure that cash flow is right. And that's as simple as either getting an app for your financial institution or um, walking into any of your any of your accounts that you have and and getting regular statements. So you can always have your uh, banker or financial institution print off bank statements for you so you can really analyze that cash flow right in front of you and, and cross out things that you have, things that you recognize here and there. So making sure that you're staying on top of that organization. Another tough thing is, is irregular inconsistent income. That's where we want to be smart about how we budget our income. So um, if you're working off hours or um, if your paycheck differs from, from week to week or month to month, um, that's something that we want to take into account of the budget. And normally we want to work on a low average basis. So if you know that you normally average about $300 a week, maybe you want to budget for having $250 a week. So if you can make, excuse me, your budget work on $250 a week, but you know your lower average is $300 a week, we want, we want to have that cushion for later in case you do have a slower week, or if you do have a really good week, um, you can divert that elsewhere to, to even out that budget. And then savings might decrease. So if um, you, have a, you have a child or you expand your family, um, then we're going to have to reevaluate your budget and, and work that out as well. Because if you go from a family of two to a family of three, um, that's going to change up your budget a lot. So Having, having a consistent budget is great, but adapting to changes in your own life is going to require you to adapt your budget as well. Um, and then as we were talking about a little bit earlier, emergency expenses do come up, um, whether it's car troubles, maybe a, a window in your house breaks. These are things that, that happen and, and they're part of life, but they're not cheap. Um, so when we're looking at why budgets fail, a lot of time it's, it's that planning um, but also it's the sometimes lack of planning for things that we don't, that we don't necessarily anticipate. Um, so knowing that there's going to be roadblocks is going to be a, a real help in, in the budgeting journey. So when we're looking at some of these other budget busters, um, I talked a little bit about subscriptions earlier. Um, they're another big budget buster, which means um, they don't necessarily make your budget fail, um, but it can, it can throw off the numbers. So we want to be aware of everything that's out there. So along with these bigger pieces that might make your budget fail, if you don't stay on top of it, we want to look at these little things that really do um, impact it as well. So those subscriptions. So let's say you have Netflix and Hulu. Do you, do you need them both? Do you realize that you have them both? Maybe you signed up for a free trial of of something and, and then it ran out and you've been getting automatically charged ever since without really realizing it. Um, again, sometimes those $10, $15 a month charges aren't breaking you, um, but over time, if it's a $10 charge every month at the end of the year, that's $120 that's out the door for, for really no reason. So be aware of what subscri subscriptions you're signed up for. Um, cancel them if, if they're ones that you don't use or don't recognize um, along with these unplanned or random unexpected expenses. So maybe an unplanned road trip and, and you got gas a couple of extra times. Um, it's not really gonna break you, but it's not doing your budget any favors either. And then changes in, in your budget that you don't uh, adapt to. Um, so maybe you get uh, a raise at work and then you decide to get a newer car 
and the, the car payments higher than the, than the raise ends up being. Um, those dysfunctions in the budget, we really wanna be diligent about sitting down and, um, and really any time anything in our life changes, we wanna make sure that that's reflected in our budget as well. And, and the big thing, and I know I'm being a dead horse, but the big thing about budgeting is, is really being honest and being diligent about all these changes uh, because finances are really important. They impact so much of our life. We really wanna make sure that the tracking is, is as good as it can be. And that's really what I have for you. Budgeting is, is definitely a conversation. So if you guys do have any questions ever, feel free to send them to me. Uh, my email is right here. It's mkislowski at visionsfcu.org. Or you can send them to Leah. And, and I'm always happy to set up a time to, to chat with anybody, answer any questions. You can shoot them to me in an email. Um, I will be responsive, absolutely. So anytime that any questions come up, um, budgeting is, is really a topic that I like to work through because um, they're so individualized. And we really want to make sure that every budget is approached um, uniquely. And, and for the best case of, of whoever's making the budget. So of course, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions and, and work with anybody on anything. Um, and Lee, I don't know if you have any, if you had any questions that- uh, came I always do. I love it. I always have questions. Um, and I also wanted to attest that Matt is very quick to answer questions. We had a question from a previous uh, session that was sent to me by Facebook. I emailed him, he had an answer within an hour. They were very happy with the answer, it was very helpful. And just today, I while we were setting up, I had a situation that had happened to me. <clears throat> I quickly um, bounced it off of Matt and he was able to answer my question. So he's very responsive, <laughs> highly recommend. <laughs> so I did have a couple of questions because you know I always do. So in general, would you say that it is best that any kind of incoming um, income, any anything incoming, to kind of estimate low on and anything outgoing kind of estimate high on just to give yourself that cushion? I do, I, I like that. Um, that's a really great play to do um, because like we talked about kind of with the inconsistent income, you don't wanna lowball yourself um, because the last thing that we want in a budget is to get to the end of the month and think, well, now I don't have enough money to, to pay my bills. Um, so the, the biggest thing about that and the Sometimes a problem that we do run in with that, which again, it's, a, it's an individual case by case basis, but what we don't want to do is to underestimate ourselves so much that we're making cutbacks in our own life. And then that impacts your, your um, quality of life. And, and sometimes if you do, if you have a business, if you're an entrepreneur um, and you underestimate your income, that might cause you to make some cuts. And, and this is personal as well. Make some cuts in your life that's, that's gonna stop you from progressing further. Um, so be as accurate as you can, but if you know that you're going to lowball yourself, just keep that in the back of your mind. But I, I do like the, the move of underestimating to, to a degree, just to know that we're able to cover everything that's coming in. Okay. And then when it comes to trying to determine your expenses and your income to make a budget, is there a good rule of thumb on like the amount of time you should analyze or um, like, for example, is it a good idea to like, I'm going to look at three months worth and use that average to figure out my budget or, you know, what do you recommend in that? Yeah. So I, I like the monthly budget. Um, I think that that's a really, um, productive way to do it. And it kind of keeps you on top of things. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of about when your bills are coming in, when, when you're really making these moves and, and that's why I like to suggest that you really take an analyzation period. So before you start your budget, take, take a month and, and really track everything that you do, because that's really going to get your behaviors down and don't change your behaviors at all. Just live your life as you normally would, but make sure you're doing that tracking very diligently because, you know, there are, there are things that you sometimes pay every three months. There are things that you pay every six months. Um, and those you're going to have to work around depending on, on what they are. Um, but some people do a two week budget. Some people do a weekly budget. It's really what works for you. But I've noticed that um, a monthly budget is generally a great starting point because a lot of things happen monthly. Um, and we can, we can really determine what our behaviors are every month pretty well. And then seasonally things also change. I know I, I like doing monthly because my, uh, because of my utilities, they, they change from month to month, you know, in, in the summer, I'm not paying my heating bill 
as much as I am in the winter. So it allows me to stay on top of things on a monthly basis. But again, it, it really is what, what your behavior warrants. So if you're, if you're making payments quarterly on things, make a quarterly budget. But I've, I've noticed that things come, come monthly. But the most popular ones I see are, are biweekly and, and monthly. Okay. Um, and you answered my question on the one. Um, doo, doo, doo. Oh, how often to reevaluate? That was the question. So that might be something, particularly if you're using a monthly budget to reevaluate monthly. Yeah, and, and that can change too. So definitely, every, at least at the very least, every year you want to sit down and, and really crunch through all of your budgets. So um, if you're doing a monthly budget, we want to save them. So at the end of the year, you can really analyze what your year looks like and kind of get those trends down a little bit more. Um, I, I like to suggest a, a yearly big breakdown and then quarterly, I would also suggest to, to re-up what you're doing on your budget. So while you're making it monthly, you're gonna get to a point where consistently it's, it's very smooth and you're just kind of rolling through month after month after month, but it's nice to um, every quarter sit down and, and make sure that things are still really on the right track. So it kind of gets more extensive the farther out you go. Mm -hmm. So monthly, you can do your, your budget that you're, that you're planning on, on going towards quarterly, break it down, see how well you did, see how well you tracked it and really followed your budget. And then yearly, you can really go through all the trends and all the numbers and make sure that you're in the right spot for, for putting that monthly budget together. So it's very much a process more than a one and done. Definitely. I, I really like that incremental uh, movement towards it, kind of the snowball effect too. Mm -hmm. And then once things get rolling and, and the longer that you do it, it's just like everything else in life too. It's the more you do it, the, the easier it gets. And then you mentioned um, individual budgets for projects or goals and then an overall budget. So um <clears throat> The way I heard that with what you were just saying also is having like a general yearly budget and then breaking it down more specifically for the month. So you do something similar with a goal as well, right? Right. So I, I always use the example of, let's say in two years, I want to go on vacation. I have, I have my, my budget that I have for my, for my month and for my year. Um, so that's my, my master budget there. Um, and maybe I, I'll add a, a section that's either project or, or vacation, if I know it's specifically for vacation, and I know that I'm going to need to divert a certain amount of money there. So that's going to over overall be in my master budget, but maybe I'll create another tab on my, on my Excel sheet that I use for my budget. And that one's strictly my vacation one. So I'm going to know, you know, this is what I'm setting aside for, for hotel or lodging. This is what I'm setting aside for, for tickets. If I need to fly, this is what I'm going to set aside for, for my food budget. So it's really kind of creating a whole other world for, for what you're planning on doing. So that planning process is, is what's really, really important. So the nice thing about budgeting is the, the sections and the columns can be duplicated over and just renamed for different things. That's what is so nice. Once you have a, a consistent budget, you can copy that and then just change the names of what you want. So instead of um, my rent, I'm going to put hotel. Instead of my car payment, I'm going to put flight tickets and the groceries can just stay the same. So it's, it's really, it's really nice. Once you have it going, you can break that out and create a budget for, for different projects you have going on because it does help you. And let's say I want to build a new deck. Um, that's going to help me kind of get in line one, make sure that I get all the proper tools and equipment and, and supplies, <laughs> but also, um, realistically, what am I looking at for a price here? Um, so budgets can really help with a lot of different planning aspects. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so I feel like this conversation dovetails very nicely into savings. So would you say it's fair to say that might be a good option for us for our next Financial Friday? Definitely, that would be great. Okay, and then to that end, this would be kind of like a teaser. Um, <clears throat> you were talking about unexpected income, like a lotto win or something like that, that you don't really want to count as income because it's not reliable. Um, do you recommend when you're making your budget to kind of set aside uh, any unexpected income goes into this little group and I will plan on like a percentage of it going to maybe accelerating this goal I'm working on or, you know, a percentage of it I'm just going to have some fun with. Um, is that kind of like a good rule of thumb? 
Absolutely. So that's kind of where that bottom line comes into play when we're looking at subtracting our income minus expenses. So the budget, again, is, is really that guiding document. And then the, the thing is, when, when you're newly kind of starting a budget, the odds that it's going to go exactly as planned are, are very, very minimal. Right. Um, so we want to be tracking that throughout the month as well. So if I have it set up where at the end of my budget, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to be in the positive $100. But then let's say I, I find a scratch off ticket or I buy a scratch off ticket and I win $500. Well, now my end of the month is, is $500 and that's in my account. So now I have that decision to make of, do I want to pay down this loan a little bit more? Do I want to go get something nice for myself? Do, what do I want to do? So the nice thing about having that, that flexible, really working budget is it allows you to have a little bit more fun with your decisions that you make if you do come into someone. So it's not a matter of, well, I just came into some money. Now I have to put out a bunch of different fires. It, right. It's going to give you that peace of mind that, <clears throat> that, you're, that you're able to do what you want. And if that is paying, paying down or making an extra payment on something, that's going to make you feel better. Awesome. That just takes extra stress off of you. If that's going out to another dinner, great. That's fun. So it, it's really just having that peace of mind and, and the flexibility to do what you want to do. Very cool. Um, okay, I think that was <clears throat> all I had. I don't see any more chat questions. So <clears throat> um, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, that's great. And the, the big thing with budgeting, like I, like I said, it's, it's so individualized. So um, I, I will send out, you have my phone number too. So if you want to share that with anybody that asks, by all means, give me a call, shoot me an email. Um, because again, everybody's budget different. There's no one size fits all to it. Um, so as you're working through this, I can give you those tips and tricks here. But if, if we really want to get into it, I'm always happy to have that conversation. All right, great. Thank you so much, Matt. So Financial Fridays usually take place the third Friday of every month. Um, it looks like we're probably going to talk about savings for next month. So plan for that. If anyone is interested in any of the budgeting tools that we were talking about, I know that there is a um, general spreadsheet available. There's a form that you could print out as well. And then I believe I have a spiral bound booklet that came from Consumer Financial as well. So if you're interested in any of those tools, um, I will share them on Facebook as well. But if someone would like to reach out to them, you can contact the system on Facebook or email me directly at Bradford County Library System at gmail.com. And we will see you next Financial Friday. Thank you so much, Matt. As always, this recording will be available on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay.